Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. In this video, we're going to have a look at the FV215B, a notoriously tricky tank to play, and one that, well, has been pulled from pillar to post by Wargaming over various nerfs, buffs, more nerfs, more buffs, even more nerfs, and it's a very difficult tank. In fact, some argue that it's the worst tank, worst heavy tank in tier 10, if not the worst tank. Well, I don't think it's the worst tank. It's a tricky heavy, but I wouldn't say it's the worst heavy out there. There's a couple of things going for this tank. One, it's got a beautiful gun. Two, it's got stonking hull armor, uh, sorry, turret armor. And three, it's got a beautiful reload, but a lot of people still struggle in it. So it has had some recent changes in the micro patch, the mini update, whatever you wish to call it. And what are those changes? So the armor thickness on the upper glacius plate has been decreased. That is actually a nerf, <laughs> unbelievably so. But this tank has always been a haul down beastie, never really want to sit upon a ridge line. The vehicle durability, that's its hit points, have been increased by 150. That is a buff. Uh, no doubt it's been done because they've reduced that upper glacius plate armor slightly. The reload time will also be decreased by almost a second. I mean, that is quite significant and that's a beautiful little buff. For a tank that really actually had that reload time previously until Wargaming decided to nerf it and increase the reload time in their infinite wisdom. Meh. Penetration value of the HE shell has also been increased by 50 millimeters. That is pretty significant for this tank because you'll see in a moment if you can get the HE out and you can hit it lovely and beautifully on a, the likes of say a griller or something then you are going to do big, massive damage rolls. The view range has also been decreased. I mean, the view range, it's a heavy tank. It's starting to have stonkingly good view range. So some of these changes are significant buffs, realistically. I mean, the reload time and the penetration value of the HE are quite significant. The vehicle durability is a lovely little buff, to be fair. And obviously the armor increase, uh, decrease and the view range decrease is a nerf. What do the parameters of the tank now look like? So let's have a look at it HP first, or those parameters. As you can see here, the survivability of the tank, the HP is, or the hit points as a lot of people like to call them, 2,576. That's quite low for a heavy tank, let's be honest here. But you can obviously increase that a little bit with the enhanced armor and the durability equipment. Armor, well, on the front of the turret is 264. That's still pretty stonking. But on the front of the hull, it's now 140. That's pretty, pretty thin. The sides of the turret, 159. That's not too bad. And the rear of the turret is always going to be thin at 106. The hull, 106 on the sides and 79 on the rear. I mean, this thing is susceptible to be smacked. As you can see there, the view range, it's come down. It's now 279, which is still pretty nice, to be honest with you, for a heavy tank. And the camo profile, 31, 27, and 6 for when you're stationary moving and after firing. Again, pretty, pretty standard stuff for a heavy Looking at the new gun parameters, well, the DPM is just over 3,000, which is beautiful. I mean, this thing does like to knock out a lot of damage. Reload time is just shy of 8 seconds, which for a super heavy tank, which is what it's meant to be, it's meant to be a big lumbering heavy in tier 10, is absolutely beautiful. Penetration values, well, the AP which is the standard ammunition 272, the APCR 342, and the HE now goes up to 187. Damage, wow, this is the big thing. Armor piercing, 400. You are knocking out 400 in just shy of eight seconds. I mean, that is really nice. APCR, you're knocking out 340. And HE, if you can get those rolls with that high penetration now, 515 every eight seconds. And you can see there the reload time, oh sorry, the aim time is 2.6, which is pretty, pretty good. 
don't forget, this is not a medium tank, it's a heavy. Although, the argument is out there that it's, it's really a heavy um. Now, I personally have always liked the 215B. It's never been the easiest heavy to play, and a lot of people have misunderstood it, to be fair. And when I say a lot of people, I'm on about sort of the newer or less experienced players. The top players and the pros have always known how to play this tank. It is meant to be hauled down. This thing is not meant to be sat on a ridge line or poking over. Now, the problem with it being hauled down is that it doesn't really have good gun depression because it's a rear mounted turret. So what are the benefits of this tank? Well, it's got stonking turret armor. It's got a pretty nice gun that's very accurate that churns out quite a lot of damage in a short space of time. And it's got decent mobility. So it's more like a heavy um rather than a true blown heavy. And this is where people become unstuck with it. They like to front line in their heavies. They like to think that they are basically impenetrable or in some kind of way they are sort of invincible and that's just not the case now the thing about this tank is just that you are able to bounce almost everything off its turret and it's a beautiful tank for doing that however you've got to be very careful with it because i mean look at this gun it's beautiful you've just got to be careful with it because its hull is pretty pretty thin and well, every man and his dog is going to be able to pen you. Um, I like the tank, but as I said, it's one of those tricky type of heavies. It's not strictly a heavy, it's a heavy um. And when you've got a heavy um, you've got to make sure that you have got those places of safety. Because without it, you are going to be in a world of pain. Unfortunately here, our team collapsed. We had a Leo just YOLO in. And we had another tank then YOLO in as well. So it's a loss. But you can see here we've already we, we, we managed to do over 2.3k damage. In fact, we do a little bit more. And you know, had we have had a bit of a team around us, it would have been a much better game. But unfortunately, it's a loss. And that's not the tank's fault. I mean, virtually every tank in the game needs support of some kind of description. I mean, to be successful in Blitz, regardless of what tank you're in you need a team around you if you don't have the team around you then the tank is just not going to be able to shine and therein lies one of the problems at the moment i mean i rolled out in the 215b earlier today i had great fun in it and you know we lost to one two and the two we lost was nothing to do with the tank i mean the tank performed flawlessly the the problem we had was basically the team I mean, in this game here, we've already lost two tanks. We're not even a minute into the game. And, you know, it's, that is just not how the game should be. But that's the way the game generally tends to be on occasion. And as I say, you know, if you've got collapsible teams, you're just not going to be showing what the tank can do or really, you know, able to make the tank perform. In this game, we do end up doing a lot of damage. I mean, this is the thing about the tank, despite the fact we have a collapsible team. I mean, here we go, less than two minutes into the game, there's only three tanks left. Me, a TD, and a light. And that's it. I mean, I mean talk about a collapsible team, it just went dump. But the FV is still going to perform nicely. We've done 1.8k here. We've got the world on our shoulders. There's nothing we can do to bring this game back. This game is a loss. It's always going to be a loss. Um, and it's a very, very, very painful loss. So all we can do now is get as much damage out as we possibly can. And that's the thing when you're facing these type of games. As you can see, I mean, 2.5k. We're not doing too badly. The FV is performing relatively nicely. This is a terrible shot by me. But, you know, in these circumstances, there is literally nothing you can do other than your best. We end up with 2.5k, and that's good enough for me. But let's be honest, not all games are going to be a disaster. Not all games are going to have the team collapse around you in the space of a minute. And some games, you can make the tank purr. And this is kind of one of those games. We, we make the tank purr, and it makes the tank shows off what it can do we've already done 400 damage and taken out a tank we've gone to this side of the map everybody else has gone to the middle 
They've got three TDs, and like most teams with three TDs, they're just going to sit at the back. This will allow us, in this beautiful little heavium, to just farm them with impunity. And that is the thing. And when you're dishing out this much damage every eight seconds near as damn it, it's not bad. And obviously if you drop that adrenaline, it goes down a lot more. But look at the accuracy on this thing. And there we go, we bounce the Yeageru. And that's what this tank is designed for. So we just managed to farm a little bit there. We're going to struggle with the Yeageru slightly because he is thickly armoured and he is very nice. But we break his tracks and hopefully somebody can smack him. Maybe not. So we have to reevaluate our position here. The Yeageru, we don't get that shot in. But now we're going to push down onto these two FVs. We have got the upper hand a little bit. The FV going to bounce in for 900. So now we bounce 1700 from that really tough turret. I'm able now to push down onto this FV. He's a one shot. We'll get him out of the game. And then we'll try to look at maybe the Yeageru or the other FV. And the mobility of the FV 215B has always been beautiful. Uh, the, the, the problem with it has always been it's, it's, it's armor, realistically. And it's lack of gun depression because it's a rear mounted tank. And a lot of people have misunderstood that. What Wargaming have done with the patch update is effectively giving it back a little bit of its loving that it that it missed. I mean, it's still a difficult tank, don't get me wrong. I mean, you're going to hear people saying, oh, it's vastly improved. It is an improved tank, don't get, you know, don't misunderstand me. But don't, as I keep saying in all these videos, don't be under the misguided thought process that because the tank now is a little bit better, it's all of a sudden, you know, the best thing since sliced bread and it's going to be easy to play because it certainly isn't. Again, we're just churning out 2.7k. We're going to get a nice second class for that. We killed four, damaged four, we blocked 1700. I'm happy with that game, to be honest with you. And this is the thing, I mean, I don't, you know, you could, I could sit here and sort of show you all these Ace Mastery games, which I don't get, and, you know, that's not going to happen, because that is not how you play the tank. The tank's never going to be getting Ace after Ace after Ace, unless you, it's in the hands of one of those truly amazing players. So what you're getting here is just raw footage of what the tank actually plays like in the hands of an average player. I mentioned in the beginning about its HE, and we're going to see the HE to better effect in a moment when we come across an AMX uh, 12050 or 5120, I can't remember what they're called now. Here we are on Yukon, a nice little map. It is quite, you know, there's some interesting undulations on this map, and, you know, you can get some good positions in the 215B. I overextend here, there's the 5120. Put a AP into him, swap it to the HE. What can we do? We can knock him for 527. And that is the thing about the HE on this tank. With that additional penetration value, it now has the damage, to, you know, it now has the potential to knock out those 500 plus rolls, which in a tank like this is incredibly nice. Okay. He managed to get a clip into us, and that really hurt us. There's another 488. He's now a one-shot to literally everybody on the map. He's probably going to get one more into me, and he does, but hey, he's doomed and gloomed, and down he goes. Already, we've done 1,400 damage. We haven't bounced anything, and we've lost half our hit points. But we've taken out one of their kind of heavy tanks. This is not a bad way to play. We have got the upper hand slightly. We're now going to push down onto this Fosh. What I don't really know at the time is that there's actually a Griller there, and there's the Griller. So, you know, I've loaded the HE, hoping to get a good roll into the Griller, and we do, 435. It's not a max roll, I mean, the max roll would have been closer to the 500, but hey, we, you know, we've given him a hard time. Now this poor ISH trying to get that rear plate, just don't get it, but we hit him for quite a substantial amount of damage, and I'm happy with that. Now we're going to focus on the Leo, and this is basically now turning into a bit of a farm fest. 2,400 dished out, no bounces, two kills. We're having fun in the 215B, and this is when the tank really starts to shine in situations like this, 
where you can use that gun, that mobility, to really harry and harass the enemy. Because that is what this tank can do. As I keep saying, it's a heavy um. It's not really, not strictly a heavy, but a heavy um. And once you get used to that mindset, that this tank needs those hold down positions, needs to put itself in a position whereby it has got that hull covered, then you just have a whale of a time. We almost do 3k, 2.8 in the end, take another 4 kills and get another second class. And again, I'm happy with that. So, yes, it has benefited from the recent patch update. It's, n oh, sorry, third class. My bad. Um, it has benefited from the recent patch update. But don't, don't go thinking that all of a sudden it's OP or broken. It's not. It's just a very nice tank. That is significantly better, or slightly better actually, than what it was previously. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been the FV215B, the British Tier 10 Heavium. It's not really a heavy, let's face it. Beautiful tank, always been a beautiful tank, but always been a tricky tank to play. Anyway, love to hear your thoughts and comments on this below, because that's what the comments are there for, guys. Until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, guys, that really is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.